This lesson will cover additional graph theory definitions. But before we do that, I thought we should review the definition of a graph. A graph G is an ordered pair V comma E consisting of a non-empty set V called the vertices and a set E of two element subsets of V called the edges. On the right we have a graph with four vertices given by the letters A, B, C, and D and five edges given by the pairs AB, AC, BC, BD, and CD. We can denote the graph G in either of the two ways shown below, where we have G equals the ordered pair V comma E such that V is a set of vertices and E is the set of edges. Or we can write G as an ordered pair where the first set in the ordered pair is the set of vertices and the second set of the ordered pair is the set of edges. And now let's talk about some additional definitions. Simple graphs have the property that no pair of vertices is connected more than once and no vertex is connected to itself. This is because our definition for a graph says that the edges form a set of two element subsets of the vertices. Remember that it doesn't make sense to say a set contains an element more than once. The three graphs shown here are all simple graphs. That said, there are times we want to consider double or more edges and single edge loops. For example, the graph we used for the Bridges of Conisberg problem shown here on the right had double edges because there really are two bridges connecting a particular island to the near shore. Notice how we have double edges here at the top and double edges here at the bottom. We call these objects multigraphs. This is a good name because a multi-set is a set in which we are allowed to include a single element multiple times. So again, the graph used for the Bridges of Conisberg problem is a multigraph. And then finally, all of the graphs here are connected. A connected graph is a graph in which we can get from any vertex to any other vertex by following some path of edges. A graph is not connected can be thought of as two separate graphs drawn close together. For example, the graph on the right is not connected because there is no path from vertex A to vertex B. Vertices in a graph do not always have edges between them. A graph is complete if every pair of vertices is connected by one edge and only one edge. Since a graph is determined completely by which vertices are adjacent to which other vertices, there is only one complete graph with a given number of vertices. We give these a special name, K sub N or just KN is the complete graph of N vertices. On the right we have the graph of K4 and the graph of K6. Notice each pair of vertices is connected by one edge and only one edge. Each vertex in KN is adjacent to N minus one other vertices. We call the number of edges emanating from a given vertex a degree of that vertex. So every vertex in KN has, has degree N minus one. Notice in the graph of K4, each vertex has degree three, and in the graph of K6, each vertex has degree five. How many edges does KN have? One might think the answer should be N times the quantity N minus one, since we count n minus one edges n times once for each vertex. However, each edge is incident to two vertices, so we count every edge exactly twice. Thus there are the product of n and n minus one divided by two edges in kn. Alternatively, we can say there are n choose two edges, since to draw an edge, we must choose two of the n vertices. So again, in general, we can say a kn graph has the product of n and n minus one divided by two edges. In general, if we know the degrees of all the vertices in a graph, we can find the number of edges. The sum of the degrees of all vertices will always be twice the number of edges since each edge adds to the degree of two vertices. Notice this means the sum of the degrees of all vertices in any graph must be even. And that's true because if the sum of the degrees of all the vertices will be twice the number of edges, the number of edges E is equal to the sum of the degrees of all the vertices divided by two. In order for the number of edges to be a whole number, the sum of the degrees must be even. This is our first example of a general result about all graphs. It seems innocent enough, but we will use it to prove all sorts of other statements, so let's give it a name and state it formally. It is called the handshake lemma, 
In any graph, the sum of the degrees of the vertices in the graph is always twice number of edges. A lemma in mathematics is a statement that is primarily of importance in that it is used to establish other results. The handshake lemma is sometimes called the degree sum formula and can be written symbolically as the sum of the degrees of all the vertices is equal to two times E. Notice here we're using D of V for the degree of the vertex V and E is equal to the number of edges. I think we'll stop here for this lesson. We'll talk more about the handshake lemma in the next video. I hope you found this helpful.